Hey y'all, we are Memphis Kim University and we are back for another Calculus Done Wrong lesson where we wrong calculus before calculus wrongs us. And today we are going to be doing a fairly easy lesson in our basic derivative topics unit. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about limits, differentiability, and continuity in the context of graphs. So what's going to happen is we're going to be provided graphs and we're going to be able to determine limits of those graphs, both one-sided limits and regular limits. We're going to determine where the function is continuous and not continuous. And we're also going to determine whether the function has a derivative or doesn't have a derivative. So these questions should be fairly easy or at least fairly short. It's, they're not going to be very time consuming. We don't have to do much math and sometimes not doing math is a good thing. So we're not going to have to evaluate our limits with L'Hopital's rule or definition of derivative. We're not going to have to determine constants to make functions uh, continuous or not continuous or functions differentiable or not differentiable. All we have to do is just look at a nice little graph and just gather information about the graph. These questions are sometimes tricky for students because some students don't like graphs, but as long as you know what you're looking for, you should be good to go. And basically, we, the main point that we're gonna try to stress throughout this video is that when you're finding limits, you don't care about what function value is actually at the point. You only care about the y value or the function value that you're approaching. But the way to see this is probably through examples. So let's start off with some examples. So again, what we're going to be doing today is limits, continuity, and differentiability. Continuity and differentiability with graphs. Differentiability. Do remember that differentiability just means that you can take a derivative, so with graphs. So in order to start these questions, what we need to do is we need to draw a picture of a graph. So let me just draw a quick picture of a graph. Let's have negative one, zero, one. Let's have uh, one, two here, and then we'll have negative one, negative two. Probably not the best drawn to scale graph, but it should serve our purposes. Let's say we have negative one and just this curvy line here where at two, it's going to be, let's make it a little bit more precise. Let's say we just draw a straight line across to make it a little bit easier. Then we have this closed dot. Then it starts coming from this guy right here. This will be an open dot. And then I'll go straight through this. So this is gonna be my graph here. And what we're gonna to try to do is we're gonna to try to compute limits again. And we're gonna to try to determine where this function is not continuous at these three main points. So let's get started. So we're gonna compute a lot of limits. So I'm gonna approach both of these three things separately. So I'm gonna take negative one first, I'm gonna take zero, and then I'm gonna take one. So for each of these numbers, I'm gonna to try to find limit as x goes to negative one from the left, limit as x goes to negative one from the right, limit as x goes to negative one, and finally the function value itself. So this is gonna be my function. Let's get started. So first off, there's a bit of notation things that you might have forgotten or might need a quick reminder, and I'm perfectly willing to give you that reminder. Remember that this superscript negative just means that you're approaching negative one from the left. So what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be looking at y values as x gets closer and closer to negative one. So you look at the y value of negative two. Then you look at the y value of negative 1.5, a negative 1.01, negative 0 0.0001. Again, just as you're approaching negative one and you just see, is there a pattern? Am I approaching a certain y value? Same thing with negative one from the positive side, except you're going from the right. So you're looking at numbers like uh, zero or negative 0 0.5 or negative 0 0.9 or negative 0 0.9999999. And what you're doing is you're finding the y values of those numbers and you're seeing, am I approaching a certain thing? Remember though that for all these limits, f of negative one does not matter. What's actually there does not matter at all. We only care about what we're going towards. We're just optimistic people. We don't care about what's actually there in the future. So let's get started here. So again, limit as x goes to what negative one from the left means, or negative, means you're or approaching negative one from the left. So let's hop onto this function right here. And again, all we do is we just draw a little arrow and as we're on this function, as we go towards negative one, as we're walking along this function, what y value are we approaching? Looks like we are approaching the y value of two. So this guy is going to be two. Then uh, let's take it from the right now. Let's actually add a closed dot to this graph to make it a little bit more exciting. Then change 
this new closed lot that I just added to the question doesn't change our first answer because again, you only care about what you're going towards and not what's actually there. So even if there's a hole uh, at the actual point, we don't care about that because limits only care about what you're going towards. So let's take negative one from the right. So again, what you do is you take your function, hop onto it uh, a little bit to the right of negative one. If you need to, of course, uh, form your hands with L's and R's then tell what is right and what is left. So this is the right side. And again, as we're approaching, looks like we are going towards the number two. So again, this function, uh, this right limit is gonna be two. I don't care about this number. I just see what I'm going towards and it's gonna be this Y value two. The closed dot doesn't matter, the open dot doesn't matter, just what you're going towards. If you remember, you don't even need to compute this third limit because it's based off the answers between the two one-sided limits. If these limits are the same, which is uh, in this case, they are the same, that means the full limit is equal to two. If they're not the same, that means the limit doesn't exist. So what does this limit say? That means that as you're going towards negative one from either side, you will be approaching the y value two. So what does this closed dot represent? Well, this closed dot represents this last thing, f of negative one. Not what's actually what you're going toward, not anything around it, but what's actually there. So what's actually there is the y value one, or what's intended to be the y value one. We can lower the dot a little bit. So hopefully that made sense. Again, what you wanna keep in mind is that the limits are what you're going towards. So we're going towards this y value. The function value is what's actually there, this closed dot. So let's talk about continuous now that we have these four things. Remember that on the AP exam and maybe college calculus exams, the thing that will get us by with graphs is that continuous means you don't lift up your pencil when you draw it. It's just a nice continuous line. So notice in order to draw it at this point, we did have to lift up this pencil to fill out our dot here. So X is equal to negative one. F is not continuous at this point. Continuous at x is equal to negative one. There's also some terms of discontinuities, why this is not continuous, that you might need to know. This is called a removable discontinuity. Another way to say this is a hole. So this is a removable discontinuity. Sometimes I've seen this word on the board for choice a, a little bit and you just need to know, oh, that means a hole. And uh, it's called a removable discontinuity because you can remove it easily by filling in the hole. But that's why that function is not continuous because you don't lift up your pen, or you do lift up your pencil when you draw this thing. The more precise way, the more precise way to tell is to compare the limit and the function value because that's what continuous means. What you're going towards, which is represented by the limit, is equal to what's actually there, which is represented by the function value. So notice two does not equal one. So you're going towards the number two, but what's actually there is one. So that means that the function is not continuous as shown in the picture. So that's all of that. Again, the question should be pretty easy. These are what you're going towards. The function value is what's actually there. So if you know what you're looking for, each question takes about three seconds. So let's try to do the ones going towards zero now. So I'm gonna just erase the negative one. I'm gonna put zero. I'm gonna take the negative one. I'm gonna put zero as well. And negative one, I'm gonna put zero. And then we're gonna do f of zero at the very end. So these are gonna be new answers. So let's do this. Again, I like to do the left limit first. So what we're gonna do is we're going to look at the left of zero and we're going to approach zero from the left. So in this case, I'm looking at numbers sort of like here. So if you take this dot right here and I'm going towards the function, going towards the y axis, which is where x is equal to zero. And what I wanna see is what y values am I going towards? What is this arrow pointing to? Because this arrow will point to what uh, we're going towards and not what's actually there. So look at this arrow, it looks like it's going pointing to the y value two, so that's what the limit is. Same thing for the right, but just on the other side. So if you hop onto this function right here, and as you're going towards this guy right here, notice that we're going towards the y value negative one. So this is gonna be negative one. Finally, these two things do not equal each other. So the limit, left limit does not equal the right limit, so that means the full limit doesn't exist because you can't be going to two different places so that means that you're going to neither of the places. So because these two things don't equal each other automatically, that means that this answer is doesn't exist. Finally, what is f of zero? Well, f of zero is the closed dot. You don't care about what you're going towards. It's what's actually at the function value. In this case, it's going to be negative one. So this at x is equal to zero. f is not continuous as well. 
not continuous. Uh, notice that when we drew this, we lifted up our pencil uh, sort of drastically as we drew these functions. If you want the fun little precise math work, why is this a discontinuity? These are called jump discontinuities. Literally, you're jumping from one function to the other. So this is a jump discontinuity. But hopefully these four things, again, weren't too bad. All we did is we just looked at the picture and uh, as long as we know what we're looking for, what we're going towards or what's actually there, then we were able to do this pretty easily. And let's try to define continuity using just the limits and the function value. Well, again, what continuous means would be the limit equals the function value, but this function doesn't even have a limit. So it doesn't exist, doesn't equal negative one. So there's no uh, continuity at x is equal to zero. So that's that. Let me erase the word just jump discontinuity. Hopefully you know what it means. Um, it's not usually asked. So I'm gonna erase it just so we have some space. And now let's do the third point. Let's do x is equal to one now. So instead of zero, we're gonna do one. So let me erase this, then erase this very nicely. So I'll just rewrite this. Sometimes we struggle in life, but sometimes minor struggles are uh, not the worst thing in the world. So let's do these for all we're going to one now. So again, from the left means you hop onto the function right here and you just see what the arrow is going towards as you get uh, x values that are closer and closer to one, like 0 0.9, 0 0.99, 0 0.999. And as it looks like this arrow is pointing to the y value of zero, so this one is gonna be zero. Now we take the limit as x gives to one, so we're on the other side, the right side, and we're just seeing what numbers are we approaching as we go towards one. That one also looks like it's zero. Finally, because these two numbers match, you don't even need to look at the graph. Because these two numbers match, this full limit is equal to zero because you're approaching zero from the left and the right going towards the same number. Finally, what is f of one? Well, f of one is going to be what's actually there at the function. Notice that f of one is going to be zero as well. So this is the best case scenario where all these four things are equal to the same number. This is what it means to be continuous. So in this case, f is continuous. We'll just write continuous real quick at x is equal to one. And why is that true? Well, again, it's because as I drew this picture, I didn't lift up my pen, uh, pen or my marker here. And also the limit equals the function value. So that means continuous. So hopefully you can see that these questions aren't too bad. Let's do some with infinity or negative infinity just, just to spice up life a little bit. But again, as you're taking limits, just see what number you're approaching. As you're doing function values, that's what is actually there. If the two left limits are the same, that means the full limit will be the same. If they're not, that means the limit won't exist. And finally, if the limit equals the function value, that's the definition continuous. So let's do some harder questions with the answer possibly being infinity or negative infinity with asymptotes. So I'm gonna erase this. I'm going to erase this guy as well. So let's do a new picture. My graph is not, my board is not very beautiful right now, it smudges, but I think we will be able to survive. So let's have this function right here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to have, uh, add some ones, add some negative ones. Let's have a vertical asymptote right here. Vertical asymptote right here. Let's say we go right here and we go to this. And this is the point one. We'll open dot it. Then we'll go straight down. Hopefully not cross vertical asymptotes because you're not allowed to cross vertical asymptotes. Then we'll have this. Finally, this point will be one. This point will be negative one. This will be where my closed dot is. And then I'm gonna have this function. Not my best graph in the world, but sometimes it's harder to draw these graphs. So this is gonna be my f of x. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna to try to do the limits as x goes to negative one, zero, and one and potentially the answer could be infinity or negative infinity. And that's basically the difference. So let's try to do this. So let's do the limit. I can write limit as x goes to negative one from the left, limit as x goes to negative one from the right. Let's see if those two things are the same. And then let's do f of negative one of the function. So first off, left limit. Left limit means you take uh, the function from the left, so we have this guy right here. What y value are, are we approaching? So notice that as I travel along this curve, looks like we're going steeper and steeper. It's like almost a roller coaster going straight up. 
And notice that it won't ever cross this vertical asymptote because they're not allowed to cross vertical asymptotes. So you're just gonna be going straight up forever. The Y value is gonna be unbounded. You're gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger in Y values. So that's what we mean by the limit being infinity. So again, this limit's gonna be infinity because you're going straight up. Same thing on the right side. So on the right side, if we have this function right here, as we're going towards negative one from the right, we are going up, 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 and that means we're going to infinity as well. Because these two things match, even if infinity is not a number, well, that means that this full limit is also going to be infinity. Finally, what's actually the function value? Well, the function value doesn't exist because there is a vertical asymptote, so this one doesn't exist. Keep in mind that these answers could have been does not exist as well because infinity doesn't, is not a number, it's a concept, but we like to write infinity because it's a little bit more specific. We don't know why, if you just wrote it does not exist, we wouldn't know why if, if it's because it's negative infinity or if it's because the two one-sided limits don't equal each other. So we're just being a little bit more specific in writing infinity. So let's talk about continuity. So uh, F continuous, we can write not continuous, not continuous at X is equal to negative one. Uh, notice that it's not continuous because we do lift up our marker or our pen or our pencil as we drew this, boom, vertical asymptote, boom. So we weren't allowed to cross the vertical asymptote. So we had to lift up our marker to draw it. So it's not continuous at negative one. This is called an infinite discontinuity. So the three main types are removable discontinuity, that's a whole. A jump discontinuity is from one piecewise function to the other. And then when you have an asymptote, a vertical asymptote, that's called an infinite discontinuity. Another reason is because if the limit doesn't exist, then there's no way that the limit can equal the function value. It can't be a finite number. And so the limit, uh, the function is not continuous at x equals negative one. So let's try to review the previous picture. Let's try to go for the zeros. So I'm gonna erase this real quick. Gonna erase this, gonna erase this, gonna erase this. And instead we are going to go towards zero. So it's gonna be zero left, zero right, zero and f of zero. So same thing, jump to the function, jump on the left side and just see what value you're approaching. Looks like we're approaching this value right here. I'm supposing that this is going to be equal to one. This y value should be labeled, but it's one. So again, as you're approaching x uh, zero from the left, you're just going to see what your arrow is going towards. Doesn't matter that there's a hole here that's the, that deals with the function value itself. I just care about what I'm going towards. So this number is going to be one. Same thing with this right one. So again, I pick a number towards the right of zero on the function, and I'm just seeing what number am I approaching. Looks like I'm pointing towards the number one, so that's great. These two limits being the same, automatically makes this third limit equal to one. And finally, what's the function value? Well, the function value is what's actually there. In this case, it is the, this point right here, the closed dot, the closed and open dot do not affect the limits, it only affects the function values. So in this case, it is negative one, that means that our function, I already drew an equal sign, so let's just show one equal sign. But that means that our limit isn't continuous at x equals zero because our limit doesn't equal our function value. So we can add to our list here, how nice. Where is f not continuous? Well, that's because uh, at x equals zero, remember that this is called a removable discontinuity. Again, sometimes people use weird words because they want to seem smart, I don't know. but. Uh, I like to use the word whole because it's more obvious that this is a whole, but again, sometimes on assessments, some teachers might refer to this as a removable discontinuity. And you don't want to miss the question just because you don't know what this word means. So removable discontinuity means a whole. And that was the review of the last one. So let's do x is equal to one because it does include the infinities, which are a little bit more exciting in my opinion. So I'm going to do those instead. So let's do one, 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 and one. So let's get started. So as we're going to one from the left, we're gonna start off a, a function a little bit towards the left of one, which is right here. And we're gonna see what we're going towards. As we draw this arrow, notice that we're going straight, straight, straight down. This is the, the side of the roller coaster I don't like where your stomach drops. As you go straight down, you're just going straight towards the ground. So notice that we're gonna just keep going down forever and ever and ever. So that's gonna be negative infinity. Again, it's a little bit more precise of an answer than does not exist. On the right side, it looks like we're shooting up. So if you take a uh, point here, you're going towards x is equal to one. 
we draw our arrow. Looks like we're going up and up and up and we'll just continue going up forever. That means that this answer is infinity. Once you have these two limits, again, you don't have to look at the picture. You just have to compare these two guys. Looks like they're different, so this one doesn't exist. Finally, what's f of 1? Well, f of 1, because there's a vertical asymptote, there's no closed dots anywhere. And function values are dependent on those closed dots. This one doesn't exist as well. Let's talk about continuity. Now that we have our four things, we've done our final limits. So at x is equal to 1, is this continuous? Well, it's not continuous because of the same reason as our previous one. Anytime you have a vertical asymptote, it's not continuous there. So it's going to be infinite. Infinite meaning an infinite discontinuity. And you might say, well, this doesn't exist and this doesn't exist, and that's what the function values, uh, meaning the limit, have to be in order for something to be continuous. But you need the limit to actually exist. It needs to be a number. And if that number equals the function value, then that's continuous. If the limit doesn't even exist, then there's no way it can be continuous. So that's that. Hopefully, from these last two pictures, you can do all your limits and continuous questions. They're not that bad. You'll be able to answer at least 80% to 90% of questions on the AP exam, usually presented in multiple choice, of course, where you're just finding these limits or you're finding these function values or finding where f is continuous. And again, the main thing is if you're going towards a number, that's what you care about for limits. You care about what you're going towards. What are these arrows pointed to? Not if the function is, or the point is suddenly shifted along that sort of vertical line there. For the function values, you do care about those closed dots or open dots, where the function value is the closed dot itself. So if you can keep those two things straight, limits are what you're going towards, function value what's actually there. If they're the same thing, that's continuous, then you should be good to go. One side of limits being the same means that the limit exists. One side of limits being different means that the limit doesn't exist. So let's talk about a harder concept or maybe just a concept you might not be as familiar with or is not very instinctive. And let's talk about continuous and differentiable in the context of these graphs. So I'm gonna erase this real quick. I'm going to erase this. My board is getting a little smudgy, but I don't think I'm gonna mind. So again, we're gonna talk about continuity and differentiability. So the word continuous makes sense because it's just a continuous line. People have trouble with the word differentiability. But what differentiability says is, do I have a derivative? Does the derivative exist? Is the derivative a number at a certain point? Another way to say this is, is the slope of the tangent line, which is the derivative, is that a point? And because you have these functions in these tangent lines, if you want to find the slope of the tangent line, that means that you would need to be able to find the slope at all, which means that the function is going to be continuous. If the function is not continuous, you're not going to be able to find a slope there because like, there's going to be a hole there. And how do you find a slope at a hole? So there is one big application uh, for functions, which is if uh, f is differentiable. If f is differentiable, that means the function is continuous. Another way to say this is if you can take a slope at a point, meaning the slope of the tangent line, that means the function is differentiable. That probably means, or that does mean, that you didn't lift up your pencil when you drew that picture, at least in A, B, B, C terms. So one way to talk about math concepts is sort of to talk about the opposite. What are three ways where f is not differentiable? These are the three main ways. So three ways where f is not differentiable. Nice to be able to spot them. So the first one is not continuous. Again, if you lift up your pencil, then you're not going to be able to find slope there. If you know the word contrapositive, well, contrapositive of a statement is logically equivalent to the original statement. So the contrapositive of this statement, f is differentiable, then f is continuous, would be that f is not continuous, so f is not differentiable. The second main way that f is not differentiable is a sharp point, where the main example of this is absolute value. So you have that famous v. So if you're trying to find the slope, well, if you're trying to find the slope, the slope um, of this line doesn't equal this line. You can't have two slopes. So that's why you have neither slopes, which means that the slope doesn't exist there and f is not differentiable. We can not be lazy and actually write the word differentiable. So sharp points are famous points that are continuous because you don't let the pencil as you draw it, but 
they're not differentiable. So this is really why the reverse of this statement is not true. And it's not guaranteed that f is continuous means that f is differentiable. The main counterexample to that is sharp points. Sharp points are continuous because you don't look your pencil as you draw them, except they're not differentiable because there's two slopes there, meaning there's neither uh, no slopes there. Finally, the last one again is another example of that where uh, the function is continuous but it's not differentiable. And that's going to be vertical tangent lines, which are different than vertical asymptotes. So remember, tangent lines are intimately related with derivatives because the derivative is the slope of these tangent lines. The word vertical means you have a vertical line just like this, like x equals 5 or x is equal to 2. So the vertical tangent line means that the slope is infinity or the slope doesn't exist. If the slope doesn't exist, that means f prime of a doesn't exist, so your function is not differentiable. So let's see these three things in action. Let's try to answer some questions about a graph that's already provided. So I'm going to erase this real quick. Let's see if I can draw this graph, because I might struggle drawing this graph uh, from scratch, but hopefully I won't. So I'm going to have this guy right here, negative 3, negative 2. This is not negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, so this is not a good start. 1, 2, 3. And what I'm going to have is I'm going to have something that looks like this. Let's have this. And then um, what do I want here? Let's have a nice straight line as we go here. This is a nice straight line, actually. Let's see here. I'm going to have a point here. I'm just going to my picture. Um, then it's going to jump. That's going to be a vertical line. I need some y coordinates. So, sorry, I'm struggling drawing this graph, but I want to include every single example possible. So, it's going to be like this. It's going to look like shooting down. Up. We're gonna have this. We're gonna have a hole here. So this is gonna be my nice, lovely graph. Kind of crazy. Um, there's gonna be a given sentence as well to accompany it. Basically, the given sentence is that f has a vertical tangent line. Tangent line at x is equal to y. So they have to give you this statement because. If you look here at x equals 1, you can't really tell if the slope is perfectly infinity. It could be like a million, and the slope of a million looks like a slope of infinity. So they have to tell you that there is a vertical tangent line. But they don't have to tell you about asymptotes because asymptotes are pretty clear. They don't have to tell you about holes, and they don't need to tell you about sharp points. Notice that this is going to be my sharp point. It's supposed to be a nice gradual thing, and then suddenly sharp. Sharp points are dangerous. If you rub your finger along this, ouch, you will cut yourself. Sharp points are dangerous. They're sharp. You have to be careful of them. So the first thing I want to ask is, where is f not differentiable? All right, let's do continuous first, actually. Because continuous is pretty easy. Again, all you do is you see where you lift up your pencil. So as I drew this graph, I lifted my pencil at x is equal to negative 2. So that's going to be 1. This was the removable one. Removable. Then it looks like I lifted my pencil when I draw this vertical asymptote. So that's going to be x is equal to negative 1. This was the infinite one. Finally, I looked up my pencil when I draw x is equal to 0 because I go from this function straight to this function. So that's x is equal to 0. So this is a jump. Discontinuity, discontinuity, discontinuity. And so these are our three re re uh, reasons why our function is not continuous. Lift it up my pencil, lift it up my pencil, lift it up my pencil. Notice that when I draw this, I didn't have to lift my pencil, so all of this is uh, points where f is continuous. So now let's answer the question, where is f not differentiable? So remember, there's three reasons why. The first one is not continuous. So we can say not continuous for this, these three reasons. So that would be x is equal to all three of these, because all, of the three of, uh, all three of these points were where f was not continuous. So that means f is not differentiable. So it's been negative 2, negative 1, and 0. Then we have sharp points. So that's where f has a sharp point. Again, just run your finger along the curve and see where you get hurt. Ouch. So it's going to be x is equal to 2. The famous v's. Sometimes they look like this, like birds, I guess. But this is considered a sharp point as well. So 
most likely they're going to be absolute value like this, a nice little V. Finally, it's going to be the vertical tangent line. But remember, the vertical tangent line has to be given its x is equal to 1. So these are our three ways that f is not differentiable, where there are three points that were not continuous. Finally, one last question. Let's try to ask where f is not continuous, or sorry, where it is continuous but not differentiable. So it's continuous but not differentiable. We'll just put DIFF, and that's going to be our sharp points and our vertical tangent lines. Because again, at these two points, we didn't lift up our pencil, so it was continuous, but they weren't differentiable. One was because it was a sharp point, one because it was a vertical tangent line. So it's x is equal to 1 and 2. So hopefully this video was useful for you. It should suffice when you're doing these graph questions. Again, when you're doing limits, just focus on what you're going towards. If you're doing function value, it's what's actually there. If those two limits, if the limit equals the function value, that means you're continuous. If you lift up your pencil, that means you're not continuous. Finally, there's three ways that a function can be not differentiable, not continuous, sharp point, and vertical tangent line. So vertical tangent line and sharp points could be points that our function is continuous, but not differentiable. And that's all it is. So hopefully this video again was useful, but if you want more practice with this, I perfectly understand because some students do struggle with graphs. If you want more practice with this, what I would recommend you do is watch our Girls Teach Calculus video in the description below. In that video, one of my former students explains some of these questions and she goes through her own graphs that are already provided on the page so they're computer generated, they're a lot prettier, or at least a lot uh, more pristine than my graphs that I've drawn. And she answers questions about limits, she answers questions about function values, and about things about uh, whether things are continuous at certain points, and she does this sort of action about not differentiability and things like that. Hopefully this video was again useful for you. I think you've already sort of uh, expressed that hope. Thanks again for watching just like normal. Like and subscribe if this video was helpful for you, and I hope to see you next time. Thanks again for watching. See you soon.